Joel, uh, we often talk about the senior championship as not as theoretical, but I have to say, today you guys were fighting a deeply theoretical battle. Well, it's it's an opening that I played last year against uh, Nick DeFermian, and I've put a, put a lot of time into it. Um, in in previous outings, Max has played in a, in a completely unsound way uh, th in this variation for Black. He did once in a game against Fedorovich many years ago, and he did it in a blitz game against me in the park. But I had no <laughs> had no illusions that he was going to play to to uh, play like that uh, today. So he he was. Uh, he was pretty well prepared. But uh, then we got to a point where I, I made what I thought was an obvious move, and he said uh, that it was unusual. I, Which one was that? Uh, this one, H3. I mean, that's what my computer says to do. Yeah, I think that's, that's to play one of the F4. Moves, I think yeah. F4 is the only idea for white. Mm -hmm. to, and the thing is, uh, the position, uh, it's all about timing, you know, because white is, wants to open the position for the bishop pair. Yes. And, you know, Black always has this idea of playing knight d7 to e5 after, after, after uh, the break. After these two get trade, And traded, so it's, yeah. it's a question of uh, who got, gets there in time. I thought he was not quite in time, but then it didn't seem that I had much anyway. Yes, and he actually played quite well. Were you worried at any point that you might end up in a strategically worse position for the simple fact that, you know, you had No, no, because, because, because I saw concretely that, that I was going to dis dissolve that pawn. Yeah. I mean, if he had time to put a knight on e5 and put a pawn on c5, yes, I would be worried about that position. But you got the c5 in? I got it, and I thought it would do a little more. And no, probably I could put after rook fd8, it's possible to play better somehow. It requires some subtlety, and I don't see it. does see say it. that queen d4 is the best move in the position. It says it's the best move, really. Yeah, okay. yeah. queen to d4, f6. Okay. It felt like both of you played quite a precise game, I have to say. Uh, so it was it was uh, correct to trade off the minor pieces. Very I, correct. I, I mean, it seemed like it was very drawish to me, but I didn't see anything better. Yeah, Joel, uh, you don't play that much, but you, whenever you come to this one, it feels like you, you come prepared. How much preparation do you do before this event, in general? Well, this year, I, I think I, I put more time in it than usual because I. I made the decision that I was, didn't want to be working really hard mm. every day, you know, putting in two or three hours. And I've done that in the past, and it's just uh, physically debilitating. So I kind of think that my, you know, my work is basically done for, for all the games, I'm hoping. <laughs> Already, <laughs> wow. Yeah, so like really I didn't, uh, today I was really just, uh, just checking some lines. But in hindsight, I, uh, you know, I wish I had uh, checked this a little bit more, you know, like, um, like queen e7 was not a move that I had. Uh, the, the, my, my computer was saying black should play bishop e6 in that position, and I just sort of followed the main line, which is very silly. You always have to put some alternatives in there because you never know what your opponent was going to do. So I was feeling very stupid when he played queen e7 <laughs> that I didn't have that worked out when yeah. I could have. But I probably couldn't have done any better than I did. So. No, it was a very correct game. Guys, join the conversation. Uh, our congratulations, Joel, uh, for the preparation, I want to say, because that's the way I feel, that when you come to the event, you can't spend three hours preparing and then think that you're going to play a beautiful five-hour game. You're already energy is, is down. So I like the fact that you're doing all your preparing in advance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the... That way, for me, the key is, is really to have uh, to have enough energy to play the games, and um, you know, also I I tend not to sleep that well, so mm. I'm, I'm tired to begin with. So I, you know, I, I need to conserve whatever energy I can. Well, good luck in your campaign. Right, I have one more question about the Hall of Fame. Is that your first time playing a tournament there? Because we used to play at the St. Louis Chess Club or the Sub Zero. How do you like the space there? You know, I've been, I've been here many times, and it seems every year it's different. You know, I, I just sort of, you know, got, gotten adjusted to playing the games uh, on the corner, like last year, and suddenly it's in, in the Hall of Fame. And uh, so that's uh, just uh, a, new, a new layout again. But um, whatever room they put us in, it's pretty, pretty much the same. It's, it's high-quality conditions. There's plenty of space. Air conditioning seems to be working fine, and uh, there's you know snacks and beverages, and um, so it's 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 all good. Um, 
Today we, we, we played in that sort of little cubby hole in the corner, which <laughs> I think is nice, but they've told us that we're going to rotate into the main room as well. So, you know, hopefully that will be, be just as pleasant. Perfect. Thank you. Well, good luck in the rest of the tournament. I appreciate that. Doesn't hurt to have it. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely.